Hello everyone, 12 year old who kidnapped Mr. Happy's channel here, and today I just want to go over the full patch notes for patch 3.5. Now we already went over the preliminary ones in the previous video, and this one's not being live recorded on Twitch. So we're basically just going to be going through the bottom half, going through the item level, some of the new items, some of the new achievements. So we're not going to go back and go through all the old stuff that was in the preliminary patch notes before. Uh, before we go on though, just want to say at the end of the video, I'll be letting you guys know what my plan is for patch day for those of you who plan to come by the stream. It will be very spoiler heavy as I am not skipping cutscenes this time, but I'll give you all those details after we go over the new stuff in the patch notes. So starting right at the bottom, we have confirmed issues and we have uh, resolved issues down here. We didn't go through those last time, although this one's in pretty big text. An issue where the market board where certain low-level equipment displayed performing a search for level 60 foot equipment for Thaumaturge, Conjurer, Arcanist, Black Mage, Summoner, White Mage, Scholar. Items that are not displayed can be seen by performing an item search with search or setting the range. Okay, apparently it's just a search issue. I just noticed it was in way larger text that, uh... Pfft, that it would, I don't know, that it was it was doing that, so I got a little distracted. So, for item levels, so we have replicas of the item level 260 ones. For those who don't know, when you complete the item, when you complete a step of the animal weapon quest line, eventually you're able to purchase what's known as a replica version. So that way, when you upgrade to the next relic version, you can still use the replica in order to maintain the glamour if you liked your old relic for the glamour. So those are what the item level 150 things are, the sharpened sword of the twin things replica. All of those are just replicas of the item level 260 relics that people are upgrading to the next step at this point. Now the item level 235 gear, uh, the Fanged Wolf Gladiator's Arm, I believe that is the new Garo gear. So all of the new item level 235 stuff is the new PvP armor from the Garo event. And we'll be talking about the Garo event and how to obtain its items later on in these patch notes. Zervanite Blade, so the item level of Zervan's weapons are all 265. Everything in the patch notes that is I-265 is a weapon from Zervan. Still a little bit lower than I anticipated, but I guess even with Thornton's increased difficulty, they still didn't really make him worth any higher of an item level. It still went from 190 to 205, so I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, even though our item level uh, paths are a little bit different now. So 265 for the Zervan weapon. So all you can see here is the different names of the different things, yada, yada, yada. One thing that's quite interesting, though, is the names of the new relic weapons do not seem to be present here. Uh, even though there's confirmation in the achievement section that yes, there is a new step to the anima quest and in the patch notes itself, there's a new step to the anima quest. So uh, we'll scroll down, get to something that we don't already know what it is. Blessed Hammer Keeps Beetle. Item level 200, Blessed Gem Keeps Mal- Oh, so these are the new Luminary equivalents of the Crafters and Gatherers items, and the achievement that describes how to get those is a little bit under, but basically, if I recall correctly, it's all about uh, how many unique recipes you've crafted. So it's not super grindy, but it's going to require you to fill out your crafting and your gathering lock. Uh, that's what all the item level 200 stuff is. There should be, you know, Tackle Keeps Ride yet. These are all the new uh, Heaven's Ward Luminaries for, uh, for Crafters and Gatherers. These are some new items. Uh, Zundu head, we can probably assume that that's going to be coming from the Allied Beast Tribe quest. There's a few corsages, red cherry, blue cherry, yellow, green, orange, purple, black. Uh, you have Inspector's eyeglasses. I'd assume this comes from the Scholasticate. Uh, the face of the Golden Wolf. Okay, this is more stuff from item level 235, so this is more... Uh, this is more PvP stuff, Makai Priest stuff. Item level 245, for anyone wondering, is the item level of the new dungeon gear. That's a 20 item level jump, isn't it? Um, from the last dungeon gear to this one, I went from 225 to 245. Uh, that's going to be pretty nice for Desynthesis, and even just because that means that it is now that these dungeon drops are superior to Lore Tome Stones. So if you're a new player and you can get up to the minimum item level for the new dungeons, uh, this is a good alternative to Lore. Uh, you can use your Lore either for other classes or for filling in other pieces. Uh, it's a good item level to stick the new dungeon gear at. It makes it a little bit more valuable. Item level 260 stuff, this is the stuff that comes from the uh, from Dunscaith, the, the final 24-man raid that we're going to be seeing in the patch. Here's some more of the flannel stuff, Zundu body. Uh, most of the stuff I'm going to scroll through at this point is all just different slots, like it's the gloves and the legs and the boots, so we don't really need to stop and talk about every single one. Now that we've already clarified what all the item levels are actually representing here. Uh, then there's new seafoods here, the Bishop Fish, Painkiller, Seti... Uh, Crystal Pigeon, Riddle, Lord of Lords. Uh, these are new big fish, a lot of these. So if you're a big fisher, well, you have something to look forward to a little bit. Uh, we've got new stones, Void Matter, uh, which I assume is something that has to... I guess I gotta look at the recipes. Let me, let me let me save comments on some of these things until I check out the recipes down below. Flannel, Soul Stones, Numenite, uh, Cloud Acorns. I believe these are new 
uh, gathering items. Zervanite Carapace Fragment. These are the items that you can use. 10 of them trades in for a Zervon weapon. Eventually, I'm assuming 99 of these will trade in for a mount. So even just spamming it as much as possible, not a bad idea. Ivy Pillar, White Partition. These are all some housing items. Tiny Bronco Miniature, the Invincible Miniature. Those are airships. The Enterprise, another airship. Invincible 2, all of these different airship miniatures for your tabletop housing. Uh, even a Zervon Miniature. Diablos Miniature, Scothic, Queen Scothic Miniature. Uh, let's see, a yarn basket. We have uh, breakfasts, another. These are just all housing items, some wall mounted picture frames. And then there's a bunch of picture frames right here, but there's one in particular that I was told to look for. Um, hmm. No, there's there's one that apparently has Ida and Papalimo, almost like a, I was like a friendship or something, but uh, I'm just scrolling through the names really, really quick. So I probably scrolled past it already. Uh, these are just all paintings. I saw something with Raubon, Nail Painting, Holy Sea, Snow Cloak, Steel Vigil, uh, Crystal Tower. Yeah, I think I scrolled past it already, and I don't feel like going and looking for it because I can't remember the exact name. Oh my god, so many, <laughs> so many paintings. I'm, I've, I was told there was a, a very specific painting that I should keep my eye out for, but uh, I scrolled past it, so I'm not going to go back. Some more interior walls, some floorings, exterior walls, miscellaneous stuff for adding the new NPCs to your housing, uh, more miscellaneous uh, things, bouquets for flower vases and whatnot, legendary clan mark logs for handing in the new items, Maki Shilling, these are the items that come from Dunscaith. Uh, there are 12 Maki pennies in a shilling, so we can assume that these will, combined with the pennies and the farthings, be used in order to obtain upgrade items for your for your uh, 260 gear, for your Shire gear to upgrade it to 270 from the 24 mans. Uh, new, a bunch of new card packs for the new tournament changes that they made to Triple Triad. Some of the new cards themselves down here, including a Diablos card, a Zervon card. Uh, the minions, the Bullpup minion, which we saw a picture of, the Windup Astinian GG, also known as VV. Uh, so that'll be from completing Hildebrand, most likely. Anima. Now, a lot of people saw this and thought that it was Anima from Final Fantasy X. Just to be clear, remember, Anima weapon. It's probably just a minion version of the Anima, which is something I've actually wanted for several patches now and expected we would get at some point. Wind Up Scothic, which will drop from the 24 men. Wind Up Oil D. Oil D. Uh, less subject to violent mood swings than its living counterpart. I have to wonder that this is probably going to come from one of the two dungeons, I'd imagine. Wind Up Moon, uh, which is poke to adjust elevation point to inform others of its location. Uh, and Bloke has to get strange looks from passerby. Uh, I'd assume this is for the same reason as the wind-up sun, in order to create different uh, different lighting effects and whatnot. Pipes, uh, Rigo pipes. So these are these are pipes that are for the Garo mounts. These are the actual items that when you obtain them and use them, it will give you the mount Goten, uh, Jinga, and Rigo. There's also the Demonic Lantern and the Phoenix Fife. The Phoenix Fife has gotten from having all seven of the Heavensward Bird mounts and then completing an additional side quest. Archon Throne is actually obtained from MGP. That is the uh, the thing that the owl sits on. It's the last boss of Google Library Hard Mode. Uh, that mount is obtained from MGP. It's less than Fenrir's, according to the according to Naoki Yoshida, but I it's I don't know how much it is. So expect it to be anywhere from 200 to to like I guess 800,000 MGP in that area. Um, we also have a bunch of orchestrian rolls. The uh, <laughs> I can, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. There's actually a lot of orchestrian rolls here. Canticle, Forever Lost, Breaking Boundaries, Another Brick, Limitless Blue, Unbending Steel. And then you have the actual uh, the actual faded copies that are part of the new recipes. And those are all of the major items. I guess the achievements is really the other big thing. Here are all the recipes. Void, yeah, Void Matter makes the Diablos miniature. So that's probably going to drop from the last boss of Dunscaith. Uh, so you'll be able to, and same with the Scothic miniature. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because I had a feeling that when I passed by that Void Matter earlier, that it was actually going to be for that. Okay, so for achievements, uh, the only achievements we really had listed before were the achievements for, uh, the, what are they called? I can't even remember. The paintings. Uh, however, we have a bunch of new achievements here that, uh, give us a little bit of insight into some of the things we're going to be doing. So, hey, now you're an all-star. Eternity, loyalty, honesty, which I, th I, that's, uh, eternity, loyalty, honesty. Isn't that the, oh, that's from, okay, that's from the Allied Beast Tribe quest. Oops, I accidentally went back a little bit. Okay, let's go to achievement again. New achievements. 
Sorry, that's the only way I know to do it real fast. Um, discovered a rare location, Bell Search Wall. These are all easy, mapping the realm. What's done is done. That's a great achievement name. Back to school three, this is what you are, which is probably for completing the main story, just like fire. Oh, it's called the Firebird, technically, not the Phoenix, but it's 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 a it's a Phoenix at the very least. So it's done is the name of the quests for the new relic weapons. Uh, now, we're assuming these are going to be I-270. I don't think the data miners have gotten to do any work on that yet. But here are the names, like this is the Paladin, Sword, and Shield. Uh, and a lot of these weapons are very similar to Final Fantasy XI, item level 119 weapons. I know, for example, Mimesis, which considering it's a book, it's a copy of, it's either a Scholar or a Summoner book, is actually the name of a Blue Mage sword in Final Fantasy XI. I know a lot of people have felt the need to bring that to my attention. But these are the names of the new relic weapons. I'm sure we'll have pictures of how they look in the next 12 hours or so. Uh, I made that carpenter. So this is how you get the new luminaries. Craft and record 320 unique carpenter recipes, 380 blacksmith. So it's all about unique recipes. If you're someone who's already been working on a lot of unique recipes, if you're someone who's really OCD about filling out your crafters and your gathering log, then you already have a great deal of progress towards your luminaries. If not, you have a bunch of achievements to look forward to to get shiny new toys for your crafters and gatherers. I know me personally, I'm pretty far along on I found that minor five, but I just definitely probably about 70, 70 or so unique ones that I don't have. So I'll definitely be working on that personally. Uh, I caught that five, 460 unique fish. Have fun with that. Go big or go home. That's 156 varieties of big fish. Okay, so here is the Garo list of achievements for the for the list of achievements for the Garo event. So all available sets of Garo gear to the Disreputable Priest. This is what gets you the protector. So basically this is collect every set of Garo PvP armor. Um, now, each individual job, all 13 of them, have their own individual achievements. Obtain the Fanged Wolf, which is the weapon, and full five piece of Paladin Garo gear. Now, from what I understand, getting one set of gear gives you a title. The Golden Wolf, the Undying Twilight, the Darkness, whatever. One, You'll get those titles from completing those achievements. After you have obtained one achievement, one title... That job becomes the job that you become qualified to earn the mounts on. So here are the three achievements for the three different mounts that you can get from the Garo event. Emerge victorious in 30 feast masses while using a title received from the Disreputable Priest. So if you, so let's say you get the Astro set and you get the Astro title. If you then go, well actually no, you only need the title. You don't need to be wearing the full set of gear. So you just need to make sure you have any one of these 13 titles for the love of God, hope that it's not all of them to get the title right here. Pray to God that's not the achievement you actually need when the server goes live. So you just get one, any title, put it on your character, and then you just need to start winning PvP matches in order to get the Garo stuff. What's very interesting to me is that none of the Garo stuff is listed in, like, is obtainable with Mandrville Gold Saucer Points or anything here. Um, they said that a dialable version would be from PvP and a non-dialable version would be from MGP, and they said that multiple times. You can check multiple sources on that. I'm wondering if when the servers go live, it, we'll find out that there are undialable versions uh, via MGP, uh, but we'll kind of just have to wait and see because, I don't know, I only saw one version of the items when I was scrolling through before. Uh, for Frontline Fury, same deal. Ten Frontline Campaigns, and then for Furious Fatalities, this is like the ultimate mount, I guess. Uh, emerge Victorious and a combination of 60 Frontline Campaigns and Feast matches while using a title. So you could technically, if you don't want the Feast one, if like this is a mount that doesn't appeal to you, you could just do 60 Frontline or win 60 Frontline Campaigns in order to get this. You don't need the Feast, but if you don't do the Feast, 8v8 should count, by the way, then you won't be able to get all three mounts. Other than that, uh, there's just some other changes that are like sprinkled throughout here. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to find all of them. I feel like those were some of the most major ones and the ones I was getting the most questions about. So I felt like it was important to go over those. But anyway, hopefully you guys are looking forward to patch 3.5. Me, I am going to be waking up, going live before the patch goes live. As long as the patch doesn't go live before 2 a.m. PST. If the patch goes live before 2 a.m. PST, I'll do my best to be on as soon as it's available. Because I'm going to be up a couple of hours before the patch. And that's just why I'm going to go get some sleep soon. Uh, so I'm going to start with Zervon Normal. I am going to watch all the cutscenes, finish the Warring Triad quest, then go unlock, go unlock Zervon Extreme. I'm going to progress on that. Hopefully we'll have that done in two or three lockouts. Can't foresee it taking much longer than that. Uh, at 9 a.m., I have a pre-made Dunscathe, all 24 people pre-made, uh, with my free company. We're going in blind, and, uh, they're going to troll the hell out of me. So that's going to be fun. So there's that. Uh, but between that, if we kill Zervon fast enough and I have enough time, I want to complete the entire main story quest, watch all the cutscenes for patch 3.5. Any other extra time is probably going to be put towards uh, Hildebrand. 
after I finish Dunscathe, I'm going to finish the other dungeon. Uh, I'm going to finish some all if I haven't finished it already. And then I'm going to go do all the side quests. I'm going to go do Hildebrand. I may even catch up on the Scholastic if I find myself interested enough. And then it's guide making time. We have State of the Realm tomorrow at 4 p.m. PST. We have Mary on the show. I got to double check to see if Ethis is going to be able to make the show. And I am hoping for a damn good time. And on top of that, don't forget February 18th, we get to find out. Blue Mage, Samurai, Puppet Master, who cares? We get to find out the jobs on February 18th. And then we have patch 3.55 with the Diadem as well as actually was i keep always forgetting if the diadem is 3.55 or part two which by the way are confirmed to be different patches 3.55 end of february patch part two is in march it sounds weird and it sounds wrong but that's what they told us so it is what it is uh so we got plenty of stuff to look forward to with final fantasy 14 over the next few months as we wait for stormblood hopefully you guys will enjoy it on the channel be sure to like favorite subscribe and share and i will see you guys for patch 3.5 tomorrow morning until then take care